So there are two assumptions with side spin that we're going to make. The first one is that side spin is only used effectively when we need the white to change direction off a cushion. In any other situation, you can just play center ball up and down the central vertical line of the cue ball. The reason to limit our use of side spin is that it's so much more difficult to pop balls with side spin because the white is moving on a curve, of course. The second assumption is that we will deliver the cue in a straight line, whatever side spin that we use. In other words, don't confuse yourself by thinking about uh, the cue being parallel to a certain line of aim with center ball or pivoting the cue or moving parallel and then twisting the bridge. This, this is all not needed and when you are able to play with side you won't be thinking uh, about these things as the, um, the way to aim will become fluent and automatic to you and to your eyes. So the, uh, the summary then is play only side spin when you have to and we are going to learn to play with side spin by delivering the cue in a straight line and the reason for that will become clearer during the exercises effectively it's to reduce variables and make learning quicker. So the variables we are going to deal with uh, when applying and learning side spin are first of all the amount of side spin we play on the cue ball, the speed of the shot and the distance from the cue ball to the object ball. Those are the three things that we need to learn independently from each other and then combined to be able to predict and plot accurately for this particular shot I needed with side spin, the distance and the speed I'm playing, how much uh, compensation do I need to make with the aiming to make sure that the curve of the cue ball results in a pot. The other two smaller variables that we're not going to go into today because they're more advanced are the height on the cue ball does make a slight difference to the uh, behavior of the swerve of the cue ball, uh, but that's, uh, as I say, higher level and more advanced. Uh, the other uh, variable is the height, the angle of the cue to the bed of the tail. The, the steeper you are, the more the swerve of the cue ball, but we're going to assume that the cue is flat and on the middle, the equator of the cue ball on all the shots that we're learning. We're now going to demonstrate the push and pull behavior of the cue ball when playing with side spin. To exaggerate, first of all, if I rest the tip against the cue ball and with right hand side and push, the cue goes to my left. That exaggerates the principle for you. Now if I play with uh, right hand side, plenty of speed, with the cue parallel to the ball climb. In fact, let's deliver the cue on the ball climb. This will be clearer. So the cue then is pointing directly into the camera. If we play with plenty of speed, the cue ball <coughs> has pushed over to the left, missing the red completely. Now if we play a little bit more slowly, that will give a chance for the spin to take an effect, uh, the friction of the side spin to take an effect on the cloth, and after pushing over to the left initially, it will come around to the right with the side spin. So initially the deflection is what happens when the tip pushes the cue ball in the opposite direction to the side play. The swerve happens when the side spin uh, has enough purchase on the cloth to start swerving it in the opposite direction, in the direction of the side spin. So if we uh, just play with a slightly elevated but to exaggerate that swerve effect, you can see that the cue ball will push away from the ball line and then come back inside. That's it, we're full ball. We play a little bit less speed. The effect will be even clearer. Now 
There you go. So depending on the exact speed we play, that determines where the white ball impacts the object ball we're aiming at.